Mike, I've talked to some people who are very much into transcendence, enlightenment as part of their either spiritual development or even scientific explorations. Right. Pulling back from that, what can we say about the brain in those kinds of conditions where people have this sense of this transcendence, uh, this sense of enlightenment? Right. Well, let's, let's separate these a little bit and, and let's talk about them sort of pragmatically from a point of view of, of, uh, of uh, from a level of sort of superficial explanation of brain science. First of all, let's think about enlightenment or let's think about the moment in which from some complex synthesis, you come to a new, maybe unexpected appreciation or understanding of some great complex set of things, or maybe some, some simple thing. I mean, every scientist has these moments. And where do they come from? Well, we know that the brain basically learns the principles that relate to how to use complex information in order to get a result. We know that the, basically this, this is possible because the brain changes in ways that are result or outcomes driven. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's seeking, you know, a better outcome. And it's evaluating when it gets one, and when it gets one, it's saving all of that information. And basically, it learns the principles, the rules of the complex variables that lead to a better outcome. It actually knows that if A is in some state, B has to be adjusted. If B is in some state, C has to be adjusted, or maybe D or an E, right? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it gets a better outcome. Well, you can actually show, it has been shown beautifully, that if you train a brain, let's say a human now, to make this, to do this complex weighing, and now they understand the principles of how to adjust A, B, C, and D, and now you give them a new challenge they've never seen before. So the question is, what do they do? Well, it turns out that they invent. They know, even though they've never seen it before, they've never had these circumstances before, they know the rules. So the rules lead to a new control state for A, B, C, and D that gives a satisfactory outcome. And a, person, a brain that's really trained can come to this, right? In other words, the human brain has the capacity to come up with something new, right? It has the capacity to put together information, understanding the complex relationships and what's predicted given A, A-ness and B-ness and C-ness and D-ness about the circumstances and the controls that are needed to solve hypothetically, any new problem that lies within this parameter space. That's a fabulous thing. And so we don't, we're not stuck with the, with the interpretation that's based upon our immediate experiences. We actually can go to the next step, and we can go to the next step not just in controlling actions, but we can go to the next step in controlling thought. Now, what happens when that process gives you a, a more than just the normal, more than just the normal progress of life where we can, we right. can build. A, and one has this sense of, of, uh, of merging with a cosmic consciousness right. and, or, or maybe in, in, right. in the scientific world right. when, you, when you come to that so-called aha experience, right. when you see a synthesis that you right. never saw before. Right. You, there's a, there's, a, there's a, 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 an emotional kick to that. Well, it's a per pretty interesting human invention. That is to say, to practice a, to engage in a practice in which you exaggerate the responses in your brain yes. or in the control system of your brain on a level in which they carry you to another state. And I, I, there's, there's just unequivocal, we know this occurs, we know this can occur, we know that, that you can exercise the brain, in a sense distort it in its operations, so that you can, in a very substantial, fundamental way, change its operational state in a, to a state that we could, you could call Transcendence. That's a complementary word. I could also say, in a sense, it's a distortion. Mm -hmm. You know, or I could say, if I remove, if I come to a state where I continually think about the brain and exercise it as I exercise a virtue, and it is a virtue of compassion, or exercise a virtue of positive feeling, or exercise some, some uh, level of control of my attention, that I actually plastically change and empower the mm. very machinery. It's plastic, right? And it will become more and more powerful, and it will generate more and more powerful uh, level of control. And it will change who I am, absolutely. And, the, and my ability, learning the ability through plasticity, right? I'm, I'm training my brain, of course. It's just as plastic in these offline operations, in these mental operations, as it is when it's learning to control 
a baseball bat to hit a baseball. It's not really no different, right? But what a wonderful human invention this is. Now, do I, do I, do I ascribe highly, very special values to this? Do I regard this as uh, enlightenment in a religious sense? Well, this is debatable, you know? Well, but it, I absolutely do believe that it's a product, it's real, and it's a product of real changes that are occurring in real physical brains. And in some yeah. cases, a one-time experience of this so-called enlightenment right will change a person's life. Yeah. And, and it happened once, and it, it, it forever thereafter has yeah. an impact. Right. What, what can we say about wow. those kind of one trial learning? If you well, there's, there are many examples of one trial learning. I mean, I, I can remember vividly exactly where I was when I learned that President Kennedy was shot. Mm -hmm. I can't tell. I, mean, I was in an anatomy lab at Johns Hopkins. Yeah, well, I was, <laughs> well, I was a few years behind you. I was still on my college campus back, in, back at the University yeah. of Portland in Oregon, but I remember it vividly. And, so there are these, and what a wonderful expression that is of the power of carrying the brain to that state, mm. you know, that it has that, had that impact. You know, do I understand that uh, completely in its power? Well, I know the brain can be carried to conditions in which you could say all of the modulatory resources that it has that says, wow, this is important, save this forever. We know that can occur. That does occur in real brains. We have those moments in our life you know, the visualizing the, the, my standing in the church when I married my wonderful wife, you know, which I've had many times afterwards to reflect on what a great event and, and happy event that was for me because, it, because it's been such a treasure, it was so important in my life. I mean, there are many, many events we have in our life that have that moment to us, that are so important to us that they transform us. And, and they are so powerful in, our, in, the, in the construction of the person that, they, that we are that they're really a special. And, and, in a radical part of what we are.